Hi everybody, I am Lady Stars on Fire and this is part 2 of the weekly healing messages, the astrology for June 4th through the 10th. Now, before I get into any of it, I went over a lot of stuff in the first one, part 1, and I do apologize that it kind of just cut itself off in the middle of me talking. <laughs> I tend to have electronic difficulties, <laughs> more or less. Um, yeah, I just have electronic difficulties often. I'm already on my third phone this year, so let me just go with that and keep on rolling. So, this is the astrology this week. But before I get into the astrology, I will just back up for a second and remind you that this is a week of understanding soul fire and controlling soul fire. The flame from within is what we're being told. We're being told to keep to the beacon, keep to the light, keep to the lighthouse, keep to the lantern, <clears throat> but do not understand that fire is delicate, that the soul fire itself is delicate because fire can burn out of control and become dangerous or it can be delicate enough to be blown out period. And we are going to be dealing with some chain reactions because I'm being shown lead all over the astrology, which to me is speaking about Saturn and speaking about impurities rising <coughs> through ourselves as well as through others. So it's speaking of ego energies that we maybe don't want to face or don't want to see that are rising, but impurities that are keeping us from having the character that we really truly are, that we want to be. And that's what this week is kind of going to be a lot of about. But we're being reminded also that the spirit, the soul fire, the spirit, it isn't necessarily soulful or egotistical. That's free will, and that's up to you. As I go into everything else, I'm leaving you with that. <clears throat> Sorry, I got something in my throat all of a sudden. I did start off in the last video by reminding you, do not underestimate the power of Gemini this week. The power coming out of Gemini, that universal third house. The sun and Mercury is in Gemini right now, sitting more or less right on top of each other. And that is the universal third house is speaking to those siblings to those short conversations, your text messages, communication, short, short distance things, more or less like a trip to the store, and the communication that will take place within those small trans, trans, transportations, basically, as well as communication itself, siblings and things along that line, close neighbors. Now, it is in that universal third house, like I said, but it's also Gemini. Which Gemini isn't just communication. It is both sides of communication. It sees both sides, for good or bad. That's why people often see Gemini as two-faced. I see Gemini as Jekyll and Hyde. You're not really sure which side of the communication you're going to be getting. That's the way I look at it. And you're taking the sun, which is your core energy, and communication is feeling very powerful together. In that communication, you're feeling pretty good about it. And that's nothing wrong with that. However, it is, it is squaring Chiron. It is squaring the wounded healer. And it is in the universal first house of who your core is. Okay, so there's something in there Chiron is wanting to point out and help you heal, help you work through in a better way for you. Maybe you're not seeing, and maybe it'll start showing itself this week. Do not underestimate that energy, because it's going to be dealing with your core in some way with that wounded healer. But when I get to the chain reaction... It will help explain that a little bit more. Now, everybody's been talking about the Grand Water Trine, the Grand Water Trine that's been going on. And it is bringing a lot of soulful healing in. And it's helping to direct that new reset that I said this is going to be coming in throughout the rest of the year. It is starting to reset it or put us in the proper, as the Wounded Healer would put it, because the Wounded Healer, Chiron, is seen also as the gatekeeper to wholeness. It's kind of helping us get the keys to move into that next part so that we can start to move into that new resetting. And that's what this Grand Trine is about because it's Jupiter and Scorpio 
which is everything your relationships are responsible for. And I mean everything your relationships are responsible for. From rent, to car payments, to child care, to children, to gas for your car, to working so you have money. Everything you have a relationship with, anything you care about, you have a relationship with. If you don't have a job, you have no money. That would be the relationship. If you don't have a car, you know about your relationship with no car. Okay, so Jupiter is bringing the higher knowledge and the abundance into this conversation along with just the mystery that Ju that Scorpio is, which usually speaks to us of birth, death, and rebirth. Resurrection, more or less. And it's speaking to Neptune, which is creating the magic we need for being able to move ourselves into this new positive way. But it's also speaking with Venus. This is helping Venus speak to us about our sensitivities. Help us understand our sensitivities. Why we like it and why we don't. But Venus also happens to give us a little bit of help with our tongue. <laughs> in a way of charming our way into what we want. So it brings up that positive energy. That positive feeling. Which also is going to be speaking to that core energy. And that is all good. However, like I said, when I look at the astrology, all I see is the chain reaction that I'm going to be walking you through. Because it just says lead all over, which is impurities coming up. And as I walk you through it, you'll understand. Because if I try to do positives and negatives, it won't make sense. I'm just walking you through the chain reaction. Maybe I'll start doing it that way. Might be more helpful. I don't know. But what I'm seeing is the North Node, the Universal Fifth House, speaking to us of our children, our creative energy, and what it is that brings us pleasure in life. Period. Whatever it is that brings us pleasure in life. But the fifth house also speaks to us of service as well. Because it's Leo the lion. The lion is the king of the jungle, but it also has to be responsible for the... It has to be responsible to itself as well as its kingdom. Okay, so we're talking about creativity, but we're talking about of pleasure for ourselves as well as for pleasure of others, for others. Now, you have the North Node is everything that you must overcome in order to move forward in life because you can't pass the North Node without, move, without learning its lessons. <coughs> Point blank, that's what the North Node is all about. The North Node makes you learn its lessons in that universal fifth house of Leo. But it is trining Chiron. So it's speaking to your 12th house of what what you can't create to be fake real anymore and help find the healing of creating right so that you can leave that 12th house and start new. So you can bring new pleasure into your life and start being able to find service that is actually suitable for you. Okay, this is a positive energy because the North Node and Chiron are working together. The Wounded Healer is trying to help you get those keys to wholeness. The Gatekeeper is trying to hand them to you. But what's standing in the way is Saturn is squaring that energy. So is Vista. Saturn and, Saturn and Vista are both in retrograde. So your rules, your walls, your boundaries, and why you have your rules and your walls and your boundaries the way you do, why you've created them the way you have, is all inwardly talking to itself right now, as well as your soul fire. That's what Vista is. It's the home and the hearth. Your soul fire is only talking to yourself right now. So you can't help but for those energies to get a little self-centered those would be the impurities of where ego is going to not pay attention to everybody else because it only wants me, 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 me. Okay? And that's coming out of the the 10th house, which is actually coming from the outer community. It's coming from your large, um, from, from showing your reputation, showing your prestige, your personal, uh, careers, your financial successes, showing them off. It's about your social foundations, your responsibilities, your duties, okay? And this energy, like I said, is not really wanting to cooperate with Chiron and with that North Node because it only wants the me, me, me because it's inward thinking right now. Your rules, your walls, your boundaries, and that soul fire. This is why I said the impurities are rising, and it's important to keep your fire 
in a balance. You don't want it to blow out of control and become dangerous, and you don't want it to blow out either. It's a delicate balance. But that very energy coming out of Saturn and Vista is turning around and trining Uranus, which is harmonious, about helping you show your individuality, your uniqueness, your freedom, and stepping up into your self-worth, your self-esteem, and your self-value. But again... It's good to be selfish and take care of you and stand in your fire and your power. But it's not good to accidentally trip into narcissisticness. Okay? That's going above ego and letting it, letting that fire just burn into uh, a dangerous fire, more or less. And that's what you're looking. You want to make sure that you're allowing yourself to stand true in who and what you are. Stand tr strong for who and what you are. What do you covet? What do you yearn for? Where is the fire and the light burning for you most? Stick with that, but do it intelligently because it is squaring Mars and Aquarius. So your warrior is willing and ready to go to fight when maybe there shouldn't be a fight. <laughs> your warrior is willing to just try something new and to just go balls through the wall out of the ordinary and I'm going to take on everybody because I can. I am fire. I'm Mars. And it can bring so much abundance with that energy right now. You want to make sure that that core energy is working for you, not against you, because that's what all of this is coming down to so that the impurities are, come out, be cleansed, and are removed as you move forward. So you are actually building character, not showing your ass and regretting it later. Because Mars and Aquarius is turning around and it is in opposition of the North Node. So you just did a full chain reaction that led you straight back to where you started. Make sure when you get back to where you started... You're not starting all over again because you learned nothing. Now, with that being said, you have challenges this week also of crisscross oppositions. And what I mean by crisscross oppositions is, is you have two oppositions coming in like this. So in a form, in that center area, they are still talking. But it's not a true actual aspect. It's just still going to be coming in enough to make sure that you're feeling that energy. And that crisscrossing energy is Pluto and Lilith in Capricorn of your prestige, of your success, of your, your, um, how you're viewed, <coughs> <coughs> your financial success, your social foundations, but it's also your respect, respect your duties and your authority in general of that outer community. And it is speaking with Venus of your home core energy, of that Venus energy of, and why I say core energy is because your home energy isn't just your family and your loved ones. It's also your home. Okay, and when you get into this, you're also getting into karmic obstacles of stuff that Jews don't even necessarily understand. So your rules, your wall, not your rules, your walls, Pluto is death, decay, and destruction, which you need to let go of because it don't serve you anymore, and change. Lilith is sitting there giving you the balls you need to either go against yourself or for yourself because it's in opposition of Venus. Venus is going to be touchy-feely in these areas from home to the outer community. Okay, but you can use Venus positively if you're tapping into that energy. It is crisscrossing that north node again. What you need to know and Mars. So sensitivity, sensitivity and Mars fire in Aquarius with death, decay and destruction for the renewal, rebirth and regeneration. Basically, in Lilith's power, this can be a very positive thing if you work through the challenge maturely, basically, with a high character, instead of letting that fire burn out of control and turn around and go against you. So it is challenging, but you can do it because it's going to blow like wildfire if you let it. Now, all of this energy is leading us through this week, don't, through this month, because like I said, six is a month of... Um, Six is a month of sacrifice, caring, healing, pr uh, protection. It is the number of man. It also speaks to us of family and home. But it also speaks to us of 
the responsibilities of man and remembering that sometimes we need to work towards peace and harmony in order to find and rebuild the light. That is part of what number six means. And we are in the month of June. You're coming into the summer solstice energy. And you're coming into where that creative energy psychically, intuitionally, emotionally, all of that is lifting and rising. And this is a positive thing as long as you are able to be honest with yourself. It is coming forward. So you're coming towards these energies that are building as we approach seven and seven which is magical anyway period for the july but all these energies are building as we come into the summer solstice but this week it's coming to sunday the 10th the 10th is a grand cross is all elements it is speaking with uranus independence individuality uniqueness and freedom is with it in taurus is speaking to that energy about us Finding self-worth, self-esteem, and self-value as we find our freedom, our independence, and our individuality and bring it to light. But it's speaking to the North Node of making sure we're doing it right. It is also speaking with Mars of giving us the balls, the energy, the compassion, the aggression, the action to flamely, to bring that soul flame up and lift it up and bring it forward. And Jupiter is giving you the abundance and the higher knowledge to do it right. So this, as you, this whole week is leading us to something that could be very positive on Sunday. I love you. Hugs and kisses in the wind, everybody. And use you wisely. Bye.